Well, good morning, everyone. It's Russ Barkley back in the new year. Happy New Year, everybody. Hope you had a great weekend and a fine holiday. Uh, this morning, I just want to talk about an article that made it into my popular news feed in the mainstream media, uh, this one appearing on the website SciPost, and it's about a study just published on the relationship between what is called social jet lag and cognitive functioning, particularly executive functioning, in children with ADHD. Now, rather than simply go through the media report, let's go over and take a look at the article itself, which appeared in the Journal of Attention Disorders uh, and uh, is clearly a study not only of bedtime problems, sleep disturbances, but also what is called social jet lag. Social jet lag here refers to the difference between the midpoint of sleep on school days, so how long did you sleep on school days, and the midpoint of sleep on weekends. And as we know, many families relax the bedtime schedule on the weekend, uh, and that creates a bit of a disparity between when you're sleeping on school days and when you're sleeping on the weekend. So you're taking the midpoint. So if a child's midpoint was, say, 3 a.m. on school days and it was 4 a.m. on weekends, there would be a one-hour difference, and that would be referred to as social jet lag. <clears throat> Excuse me. So social jet lag, then, is referring to the difference between what are thought to be biological rhythms related to sleep and arousal and social factors related to more relaxed bedtime, maybe the use of social media uh, or watching television or whatever kids are doing on weekends and they're staying up later to do it. Um, so, very interesting article. I'd never heard of this concept before, by the way, social jet lag, but it is described in the article. And by the way, if you go to the link to the article, you are able to look at the entire paper. There is open or free access to this paper. So, uh, the study involved 350 children diagnosed with ADHD at the Johns Hopkins Medical Center Neuropsychology Clinic, operated by my good friend Lisa Jacobson. Uh, and it's a very well-done study that assessed these children using questionnaires and tests of executive functioning. The parents completed the questionnaires with regard to sleep, uh, when they went to sleep, when they woke up, uh, any sleep difficulties or disturbances, uh, and, of course, the kids took neuropsychological tests, uh, largely of executive functioning that involve things like working memory, processing speed, uh, and so on, problem solving, what have you. So what did the study find? Let's scan down here and we can actually take a look at some of the charts that were published in the article. So here's a distribution of the bedtimes, that is when the kids went to bed by the hour, uh, in the school days. And then next up, and you can see here about the midpoint is right around 10 to 10.30 at night. Uh, next, they computed when they were had free time, weekends. And when was the midpoint then? And you can see that the average time that the kids went to sleep was between 10.30 and 11.30, right around 11 o'clock. So you can now compute the midpoint difference between these two, school days, weekends, and see how much they differ. Here's the distribution of the differences. Most kids, it was about a half hour, but some kids, actually a rather sizable minority, it was an hour or more difference. And you can see here for a number of these ADHD children, uh, it was greater than an hour. It's an hour and a half up to four hours difference between their school night and weekend uh, sleep patterns. And that is what is referred to as social jet lag. Now, what did they find? Well, first of all, it's helpful to point out that they found that nearly half of the children in this study had sleep difficulties, whether it was sleep onset problems, difficulties waking in the morning, uh, or restlessness at bedtime or during sleep rather, which is about 18% of the kids. 
25% uh, had onset problems, falling asleep, and 21% had difficulties waking in the morning. But uh, those are the three most common bedtime and sleeping difficulties. That is very characteristic of people with ADHD, both kids and adults. So no surprise there. Uh, then they looked at whether or not the degree of social jet lag was related to cognitive impairment, that is, difficulties with these measures of executive functioning. And that is, in fact, what they found, is that there were significant relationships between social jet lag, as you see here, uh, and things like working memory, uh, attention, processing speed, visual reasoning, and language-based reasoning. So all of these difficulties were related to the extent to which the child had experienced social jet lag. So the upshot of this study is that greater disparities between bedtime on school nights and bedtime on weekends is related to greater difficulties with cognitive functioning generally and specifically measures of executive functioning. So parents out there, listen up, because what this means is you might want to be paying attention to how great a disparity there is Try to shorten that up. Try to keep a more consistent bedtime between school nights and weekend nights or free nights uh, because it could be impacting your child's functioning. And although they didn't measure it, it's very possible that these sleeping difficulties are related to daytime inattention, which would then carry over into inattention at school. We already know that the extent of sleep problems is very much related to inattention at school in ADHD children based on other studies. So uh, a very nice study that got picked up by the mainstream media, which is why I'm covering here on my playlist on breaking news on ADHD. So thanks for joining me today. And uh, again, wish you a happy 2024. Uh, please join me again for other videos. And as I always say, if you're not a subscriber, think about subscribing, please. And if you know people who might benefit from my material, please recommend this channel to others. Thanks.